Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome to the Georgia State Sports Update. Dave Cohen joined by Georgia State's men's golf coach, Joe Inman, and we take the show on the road this week. It's an off week for Georgia State football. We'll be back with Coach Miles next week as the Panthers get ready for their homecoming game against the Flames of Liberty October 3rd in the Georgia Dome. But we're not talking football this week. We're talking golf. A little later, we're going to talk some volleyball. And Coach Inman, welcome to the set on the road here this week at the Sports Arena. It's great to have you. It's great to be here. Let's talk a little bit about this Georgia State golf team. You guys uh, have won tournament now in the books. You guys ended up finishing 10th, and who doesn't like to go to Kiowa Island? Wonderful trip. Uh, we sent four, four kids down there who'd never played a college tournament. We went straight off qualifying. I always like to do that in the first tournament so everybody knows there's no protected spots, and we had four that, that uh, Kiowa Ocean ranked number one in the world in difficulty kind of got them. Talk a little bit about the weather I heard on the final day, a little windy, a little blustery, and uh, what, only four teams shot, what, above 300? Right, shot below 300. Shot below 300. And the, the storm, it, it was like it was just off the, it, you could see it raining like <laughs> an, a mile out, and it just kind of passed and never came in, and so that we had all kinds of contingencies in case it rained, but it didn't rain, so. One of those storms that uh, probably looked on shore and said, hey, there's a golf tournament hey, over there. Let's go ashore. Let's still mess with those kids. They're having a great time. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, 2015 version of uh, the men's golf team. Uh, coming off uh, your season of a year ago, as you and I were talking, a little younger. Uh, you've got J.J. Gray and uh, you've got uh, Maloney, but uh, you've got, you got some freshmen on this team. you got a lot of freshmen. You're looking for to make a contribution. Well, you know, they've only played one tournament. Some of them hadn't played any. Right. And it's very difficult. You let them, I, I tell them in qualifying, no lessons, no work, no coaching. Show me what you brought. Let's dance with who brung you. 
and after qualifying, after we go through a few tournaments, we'll see how you stack up against college golfers. And then we'll come up with a plan of what we can do if you're not meeting the level, all right, how do we get there? And, you know, we want to be good. We, we don't, my, here's my motto, and it's what I say to them all the time. We don't make excuses, we make birdies. Right. It's a good saying. Obviously, this team starts with uh, your senior, J.J. Gray. Of course, I first met him as Jonathan. He goes as J.J. Right. now. Right. He and came here as Jonathan. He he's J.J. In, now. Exactly. Yes. And, and, you know, he's, uh, you know, he, he's your go-to guy. He's, he's the leader of this golf team. He is so, he's just such a great young man. And he's got so much ability. And his problem really is, and we've been working on it now for three years, how do I get speed out of my club head? Most of us, as we get older or are out there in the world watching the play golf, want to say, how do I get speed into my club head? Well, he's got so much speed that it's hard for him to control the ball sometimes. So we're working on how do I keep it online and get a little softer so, you know, when you, when you got an 80-yard shot, you don't want to hit it 100. <laughs> Another guy that played pretty well for you over at Kiowa Island was uh, one of your juniors, Nathan Maloney. Yes. Nathan had a fabulous summer. Nathan has improved as much as anyone I've seen in two years. He was not offered anything by anybody. He was passed over by all the schools in the state. Uh, we didn't have a spot, but I went and talked to him again, and I said, do you really think you're a Division I player? He said, yes, sir. He said, I just choked to death. When all you were around, I just wanted it so bad. So I offered him. He came, and he has improved. He had a great summer. He's going to have a great junior, senior year. Well, he's one of those kids, it sounds like, and I've not seen him play, but given the opportunity, takes advantage takes of everything, advantage that, of, of the opportunity that you've provided for him to play at this level. He has the Zell Miller Scholarship. He's in Honors College. He has a 3.9 GPA plus. He has gotten better every year. He is everything you would want your son to be. I mean, he is just a great young man. All right, so from your standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, coaching these freshmen. You've, you've got Gray, you've got Maloney. I mean, I'm not saying that you're not coaching them, but these guys, it's not their first rodeo, so right, to say. Right, right. You've got a number of newbies on this team. How does that change your approach from, from the sideline where you're, where you're standing? Well, if you're, if you're at Alabama or Georgia or Texas, you get finished, pro you get kids that are winning an a, a American junior and, and winning, the, like Jordan Spieth, the national junior. I get projects. So if I can't develop projects, then I can't coach here. So my job is to take them, figure out where they are, sit down with them and say, all right, here's what they do in college golf. Mm -hmm. You've seen now a tournament or two tournaments. Usually it's after the, the fall, and we sit down in the off season and said, you see where you stack up. Here's your stroke average. Junior stroke averages are much lower than they are in college because they play the courses way up. That's one of our big problems. How, who can transfer from shorter courses to longer courses? And then we come up with a plan of how to get them better. So we've, we've, done, we've done it with some of them. You don't do it with all of them, but Nathan Maloney's one, Tyler Gruca. There have been kids come through here who've gotten better, and that's a great feeling. So real quick, just comment, if you would, on some of the freshmen, some of these guys that you're developing uh, as we move along. Well, here. Nick Budd is probably the most advanced of them. He did well at Kiowa. He'll play in the next one at Preview. We leave on Thursday. Uh, just got a world of talent, a lot of club head speed. Sam Asbury was a basketball player. He averaged 20 points a game at Holy Innocence last year in double A. I mean, he scored over 1,000 points in high school. So he was much more accomplished as a basketball player, and, but he knew he couldn't play Division I golf. He just wasn't fast enough. He wasn't good enough on defense, I mean, Division I basketball. So he's transitioning to golf. He has a world of talent. But we've got to work on getting his club head in the right place. We've got to work on getting his mind in the right place. And he needs to play tournaments. He's somebody who just isn't very tournament tested. In two years, come back. I think he'll be a much better player. All right, time now to take some questions from the Georgia State student body for our head golf coach, Joe Inman. I'm Jeff Irwin. I'm a film and video major here at Georgia State University. And my question for Coach is, in all of your years of coaching, what is the best place you've had the opportunity to take one of your teams? Uh, my first year here, we went to Hawaii, Turtle Bay on the north shore of Hawaii. Pretty doggone nice place. And in two weeks, we go to Cabo San Lucas on the end of uh, 
uh, the Baja in California, and it is going to be fabulous. Everybody's going, and they're all excited. My name is Rachel Ramatar, and I'm a film student. Coach, my dad says you had a successful career playing on the PGA Tour and the Champions Tour. What was the best part about that experience? Well, the best part of that experience, obviously, is when you play well. But in the long run, it's the relationships you make, the people you make, the, the places you go to. I got to play with the President of the United States. I, I met the Queen of England. I've, I've been to every continent except Antarctica. They don't play a lot of golf down there. So, you know, I, I, I played the King's Tournament in Rabat in Morocco. So they're just places that you go that you could never have gone in any other business. Hey coach, my name is Joseph Stewart and I'm a communications student here at Georgia State University and our golf program has been very successful over the years and I was wondering why do you think you've been able to maintain that success for so long? The reason I'd say is that it's a focus of the coaches. They hired good coaches. Uh, Trey Jones is now at Florida State and he's doing, he was number one last year sometime during the year. Matt Clark went to the NCAA and did fantastic. He came from Alabama. You know, golf has been my life. I enjoy it. I love working with these kids. So the, the administration and the, the coaching staff really care about these golf programs. And we put, as, we put all our energy in them, even with our handicaps of being in downtown Atlanta, trying to be as good as we can. I want to thank our students for their questions for Coach Inman. And, uh, Coach, appreciate you joining us. I guess coming up next for you, back down to Florida, Destin, Florida, going to take part in the Sun Belt Preview. Yes, sir. All right, well, best of luck down there. We want to thank Coach Joe Inman joining us here on the Georgia State Sports Update. We turn our attention out of volleyball. We're going to talk to Sally Paul Hamus here in just a few minutes. But Beth Van Fleet has been a part of the Georgia State volleyball program for a number of years, court volleyball as well as beach. And right now, she's going to bring us up to date on her workings inside the volleyball program. First of all, I have the very best job in the country. With that said, it was a long road getting to where I am now. So coming out of high school, I had several different options to play indoor volleyball on a scholarship. Several of those options were in my home state of Florida. One of them was here at Georgia State, and getting out of Florida, kind of spreading my wings, was very appealing to me. Uh, the biggest draw to Georgia State was the team that was here, and then also it was going to be the host site of the Olympics. My career was really interesting. My first year as a freshman, I think we were 9 and 21, and by my senior year, we were 21 and 9, and ranked nationally and ranked uh, regionally as well. It was really exciting to be at the start of the program, building um, the speed that it's gained over the years. Since then, I did graduate. I worked in advertising for a couple of years, and then I kind of changed gears. I took a little bit of an untraditional route getting to the professional level, and largely that was possible because of what I accomplished here at Georgia State. From, from the Panther family, from everything, from the people around you who are encouraging you and leading you and guiding you. And for me, that was pivotal to having the confidence and the courage to move out to California where I knew nobody to start over again at the bottom of the pecking order and know that I could work my way back up. That was quite a fun adventure going out there, but I do think what I took from my years here at Georgia State was learning how to start over and be humble, much like starting out your freshman year and having to earn your way up, and that's very much what we had to do on the Pro Tour. So while I was playing on the AVP tour, there was all these rumors started that beach volleyball was going to be started at the collegiate level. And all of the pros were very, very excited about it because it was going to feed in to our national program so that as a country, America would improve in the beach volleyball scene. As soon as I found out that Georgia State was one of the schools interested in adding sand volleyball at the time, I started calling everybody I knew who was still here. I was still competing at the time, but I was calling people at Georgia State to see what I could do about coming back to help start the beach volleyball program here. Coming off the professional tour and trying to learn the NCAA rules, it's two very contrasting worlds. I was living in a world where it's all about sponsorships and marketing and branding yourself and creating this identity. And then I start working at Georgia State where it's a D1 program and we have NCAA guidelines. So I really had to learn the rules quickly and kind of adjust how I had proceeded the eight years prior. Coming, coming back home to Georgia State was so comforting and also extremely challenging. It was nerve wracking in the sense of I was gonna be wearing the coach's shirt now instead of the jersey with the number on it. It was on me to make sure that these student athletes have a wonderful experience here at Georgia State, that they learn 
how to play better band volleyball or beach volleyball, that they learn how to be great people, that they learn how to strive in the classroom for A's or B's. So it was a much different management role than leading one team as a player on the team. It was now trying to guide and motivate and lead the team. But to come back and put on the coach's hat was an absolute chilling experience. And, and it was very much a dream come true on many levels for me. Making it to the national championship last year was very much a reflection of the hard work that our student athletes have put in over the last two years. We started with a group of 12 young ladies and I would say about eight of them had never really played beach volleyball before. It was a huge learning curve for them and to accomplish what we did last year was phenomenal but we have even bigger shoes to fill this year. All right, great to hear from former Panther player and now coach of the beach volleyball program. That is uh, Beth Van Fleet. And we turn our attention now to Sally Polhamus. And uh, great to have you here. We're talking now court volleyball. Busy time of the year for you. You guys are right in the midst of the season. Four and eight and just back from the great state of Texas. Yes, this was our first weekend of conference play. Um, we just returned on Sunday and we played Texas State and a return visit to us this Thursday. So it's a quick turnaround. All right, let's talk about the two matches. You got to uh, take on uh, UT Arlington, and I think that went four, four sets. Yes. And then, uh, then went down to San Marcos to take on Texas State, as you mentioned. Yes. Uh, both matches were very close. Uh, both very equal competitive teams. Having them at home is going to be quite an advantage. This Sun Belt Conference, home is definitely, you've got to get your home wins and steal some on the road. And everyone has a great home crowd. Um, the atmosphere was great. Uh, our team really rallied uh, around. We, we lost a couple players early in the season to injury. They're starting to come back. We have some freshmen starting. So it, it's very exciting. Each day we get better. We've had some good crowds here at the Georgia State Sports Arena for uh, court volleyball. How have you found it if you, as you travel around the country with the Panthers, whether it's a Sun Belt match, and again, there's only been two so far, uh, but even in the non-conference, uh, how have you seen the reaction to, uh, to court volleyball grow in your time as coach here and when you were down at Florida? Definitely the attendance here in the sports arena has, has grown. We doubled our attendance last year, but then adding the new video board and the environment, wow, it, it's just such an incredible stage to play on. And then you add the student section, who last year versus our Georgia Southern match was just incredible. Talk about you know, kind of the seventh person in, in volleyball being there. Um, the student section was great. So we're hoping to continue that tr tradition. We had a great turnout versus our match versus uh, Kennesaw State. So uh, we're just going to continue to to connect with the students and get them here to support us. So whether it's basketball or volleyball, something about bringing Georgia Southern into the sports arena brings people out, and uh, that's a great home court advantage for Georgia State. Again, uh, we're talking with Sally Paul Hamus, uh, volleyball coach of uh, court volleyball. Your team is when you talk about balance, you got six seniors, six freshmen. One junior, one sophomore. You got, you're right down the middle. <laughs> we are definitely down the middle. We actually rely on a lot of our um, underclassmen to, to play this year and step up. And what incredible leadership from our seniors, um, both on and off the court. Just a, a very driven group academically, um, character. So it, it's been a lot of fun bringing these two groups together. So with the freshmen, when you get them out of the high school ranks, the seniors, the seniors have been here. They, they kind of know your system, what you expect. When you get the freshmen in here, I'm sure the seniors kind of take a little bit of a leadership role, but what's, what's one, one or two things transition-wise that the freshmen have to get used to uh, coming from high school into Division I college at the Sun Belt level? The two things that are the hardest transition for incoming freshmen is the physicality of the game. And so in high school or club, when they're playing, they might see one or two people that can block, that are a big block. Here, as across the net, you have a huge block. And the power in which these players hit the ball and the speed. And the second thing is the actual speed of the game. If you watch it on TV, it's not nearly as fast as when you're on the court. And the reaction time that a defender has to have against a hitter or um, jump serves are coming at 65 miles an hour and so it, it it's coming at you fast your reaction time is fast you have to be athletic let's talk a little bit about some of your personnel Deidre Bohannon coming off uh, she's uh, had her sixth double double in the most recent match in Texas 21 kills 13 digs 
Yes, Deidre is no longer a secret. <laughs> and so uh, everyone's game plan is to attack Deidre from the service line. So she's passing six rotations for us. She's doing everything. She's blocking, hitting, defending, serving. So you're talking about a complete all-around player. And she's done a really nice job stepping up to that pressure. She gets double the amount of serves than anyone else on our team because that's everyone's game plan. Well, when you talk about student athlete, too, if you look it up, her picture's going to be right there. She was recently named one of the 30 finalists nationally for the Senior Class Award. And, of course, that recognizes student athletes not only for what they do on the field or, in this case, on the court, but what they do in the classroom as well. Yes, being a respiratory therapy major, she a lot of times will fly in to meet us where we're playing or drive in separate with one of the coaching staff members. She has a very demanding schedule, which uh, several of our players have, uh, Kitata Jonaku in law school. and um, But with, with clinicals in Deidre, she'll be at either Grady or Northside Hospital from 6.30 a.m. till 3.30, get in her car, come here, go right to practice for a three-hour practice, go home, study, and do the same thing the next day. So you're talking about unbelievable discipline and, and just drive academically and athletically. Another one of your Panthers we want to touch on. She's coming off a, a trip down, I guess, to San Marcos with 19 kills, Christina Stinson. Christina Stinson has done a great job stepping up for us this year. She uh, played all, the way out, all around last year, but she's become a go-to player and really grown her game being a smart player. When you look at Deidre, uh, a play, you, you see the physicality that Deidre brings. Christina is a very smart, she, she can pick apart a team, their defense. Um, you know, she's like a really good point guard able to penetrate the, their defense and she does a nice job scoring for us. Way to put basketball terms in that uh, explanation. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, before we get to the questions for you, uh, the Sun Belt. Again, you're only two matches in. You've been to Texas and you've seen UT Arlington, you've seen Texas State. You'll have Texas State back in Atlanta this week, but how's the Sun Belt stacking up from your vantage point? Overall, a really good pre-conference for the Sun Belt. We had um, some nice wins. Arkansas State had a really nice pre-conference schedule, executed very well. Um, App State played a really challenging schedule. A lot of top 50 teams, and they went five sets, a lot of them. So you're talking about teams that right are on the bubble. We finished with four teams in the top 100 last year in RPI from the Sun Belt. We'll probably have more like five or six in, the, in that ranking this year. Well, and that says a lot about Sunbelt Conference Volleyball. And speaking of, as we touched on earlier, the, the fact that the crowds are so much better. You've doubled this year. Six of your final eight matches are going to be right here in the Georgia State Sports Arena. You can't ask for better home court advantage, especially down the stretch in league play. You're exactly right. Especially, that's such a great time because that's when midterms hit. And for us academically to be home during that time and not traveling, that's a huge advantage. We are getting the brunt of the schedule being on the road so much now. But we're very much looking forward to October, November. All right, our producers of uh, the Georgia State Sports Update have been across the Georgia State campus and they have come up with questions from the students. And coming up, we've got questions right now for volleyball coach Sally Paul Hamas. Hi, coach. My name is Andrea Manning, representing Georgia State University with my major in communications. Outside of coaching the sport volleyball, what are some of the duties of your coaching staff? Some of the main duties of our coaching staff is recruiting, um, identifying great talent, young, looking at freshmen and sophomores all the way up to seniors in high school, uh, creating relationships with them, sharing Georgia State and what we have to offer academically and athletically here. That's, a, that's one of our main roles outside of training and coaching our team. Then we look at growing and developing our team and um, preparing our student athletes to be confident young women when they enter the workforce or go play professionally overseas, whatever their, their career path is, that they are confident in who they are, their skills, um, able to adjust to the working world. Um, we always feel like student athletes can make us such a huge impact because of their conflict management, time uh, management, their leadership, their work ethic. And so it's just helping to cultivate and nurture that, that leadership as they continue to grow. I'm Liz McGuinness. I'm doing PhD communication. And I want to ask coach, what are some of the things you do for your players to make sure that they're doing well in school? 
So academically, they're here first for to graduate. That's their number one goal. And for us, we also make sure that their weekly academic reports, they're on top of their all their assignments. There's a great life skills program here that works with study skills, time management, um, education on uh, tutoring, all of that. So we're making sure that they're using all the resources to, to achieve the highest level they can in the classroom. Hi, my name is Abbas Arman, and I'm a co-owner of a Brie Coffee Room here at the heart of Georgia State campus. Coach, I have a quick question. What is your goal for your student athletes as you coach them through college? I feel like I have the best job in the world because I get to work with student athletes that are driven, that um, come to Georgia State because they see the academic opportunities, the athletic opportunities. It's always our goal to get the most out of our student athletes in the classroom and on the court. And so pushing them past what they felt like they were capable of doing, inspiring them, motivating them, and more importantly, having them inspire others. And so it might be a eight-year-old learning the game of volleyball, or it could be someone else in their class understanding the workload that these student athletes have. And so that, that's the goals that we have for our student athletes when they graduate. And that's why we are so excited to come every day to work and, and help assist these student athletes. All right, we want to thank our students for our questions, uh, for uh, Coach Paul Hamas. You know, your answer to question one made me think of another question. Professionally, if once their collegiate career is over, what are the professional opportunities for, uh, for volleyball players, whether it's beach or court indoor? So in the States, the national team is really the next level for anyone that wants to stay in the States. But even with our national team, most of them go overseas and play. Volleyball is a very lucrative career um, prof or on court because you can go to Italy, Germany, um, China, anywhere and make great money. And um, their season lasts from August to May, and then Puerto Rico is another place where a lot of our players will continue their, their career. Their season's from January to uh, the end of May, and so that is an opportunity. I've had the luxury of coaching 10 players that have gone overseas to play professionally, and it, it's a great opportunity. All right, Coach, appreciate it. Appreciate you being here, and best of luck down the stretch. Thank you very much. All right, we invite you to come on out and see some Georgia State volleyball. Again, they're going to be playing quite a few matches down the stretch in Sunbelt Conference play right here at the Georgia State Sports Arena. So again, we want to thank Sally for stopping by and joining us and bringing us up to date on court volleyball. Right now, it's time for what's going on at Georgia State. Busy time athletically here on campus. And right now, here's the upcoming schedule. Coming up on Saturday and Sunday, September the 26th and 27th, we have men's tennis taking part in the Georgia Tech Fall Invitational over at Georgia Tech. On Sunday, September the 27th at 1 o'clock, women's soccer in action out at the Georgia State Soccer Complex. They're going to be taking on the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette. On Tuesday, September the 29th, men's soccer in action, hosting the University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's going to be at the GSU Soccer Complex. That'll be at 6 p.m. And then on Saturday, October 3rd, football back in action after an off week. Going to be hosting the Liberty Flames. It's the homecoming game at the Georgia Dome. 3.30 kickoff. All right, I want to thank our guests today. Joe Inman, the men's golf coach. Beth Van Fleet, the beach volleyball coach. And Sally Paul Hamas, the court volleyball coach. Great to hear from them and what's going on in their respective programs. Head coach Trent Miles will be right back here in this seat to my left. Next week, we'll be talking about Georgia State football. Panthers coming off an off week, but... Coming up next on the schedule, it's the Liberty Flames in the homecoming game at the Georgia Dome October 3rd. That is a 3.30 kickoff, 3 o'clock if you're with us on the radio. I want to thank the entire crew. I'm Dave Cohen. We'll see you next week right here on the Georgia State Sports Update.